individuals have dealt with procrastination. Today, I'll talk about what procrastination is and how to deal with it. I've dealt with procrastination a lot as a student, and I even procrastinated writing this. However, I've done a lot of research, and I feel like, I feel like I'm fit to speak on this topic. Today, I'll go over what procrastination is, the ways we procrastinate, and how to deal with it. First, let's take a look at what it is. So what is procrastination and how do we do it? Procrastination is something we've all done in the past. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines procrastination as to put off the intention, put off the intentionally doing of something that should be done. The New York Times article from 2019 by Charlotte Lieberman says procrastination is derived from the Latin verb procrastinare, to put off until tomorrow. There are many ways to make, there are many ways and causes that make us procrastinate. One way we procrastinate is we might not want to do something, so we put it off. Another way that leads to procrastination is having low self-esteem in yourself. When you think you're not going to do good, you might not even start, and you might not even try. Today, technology is a big reason why we procrastinate. Playing video games, being on your phone, or being on social media are ways technology makes us procrastinate. In a BBC article from January 2022 by Jane Wakefield, a technology reporter, said that people on average spent four hours and 48 minutes on mobile apps a day. The social media algorithms make it so that we get videos and posts tailored to us and that we don't want to get off. So that makes us, that's what probably makes it so addicting. Now that we know what it is, let's look at the effects of procrastination. Procrastination has many negative effects on our lives and worsens our health. Procrastination also has a negative effect on our daily lives. Procrastination can cause higher stress levels. Putting things off to last minute will make you more stressed about it. Procrastination can also lead to not being able to do certain things you would have enjoyed doing. Instead of hanging out with your friends, you might have to do your homework. A personal example of how procrastination affects me is I I say I didn't do it in the past, but I procrastinated and I wasn't uh, but I procrastinated put off to the very last day it was due. I stressed about my essay and was barely able to focus. I wasn't able to hang out with my friends and uh, I had to stay up late because I had to finish the essay. It was my best work because I rushed it, and my sleep schedule was affected because I had to stay up so late. Uh, and I didn't get a good grade either. If I just not procrastinated, I would have been able to hang out with my friends, get a good grade, and uh, not be distressed. Now that we've gone over how it affects our daily lives, let's take a look at how it affects our mental health. Procrastination has many negative mental health effects on people too. A US News article from Amy Dorn from January of this year says researchers found that more than 3,500 college students who they studied scored high procrastination scale or were more likely to report certain health issues nine months later. In the McLean Hospital article from 2022, it states that procrastination can be linked to depression, anxiety, ADHD, poor study habits, and a low self-esteem. We obviously don't want these negative effects, so let's examine how to avoid it. There are, many, there are many ways to deal with procrastination. An easy way is to make it schedule. Uh, in a Boise State University article from 2021, author Dean Bakari said the best decision you can make towards avoiding procrastination is to plan your days in advance. Planning your days in advance helps you not put things off to the last minute and so that you know what you have to do. Planning your days in advance also helps you not get carried away on your phones. Instead of using your phones to procrastinate, you can use them as a tool. Setting time limits on your phone may be helpful. Setting, if you don't like setting time limits on certain apps, you can also set uh, phone reminders too. It'll help you not get carried away on your phone. In the Washington Post article from 2021 by Angela Haps, says that we focus too much on the bigger picture that we need to complete one smaller step at a time. The article says instead of looking at the forest, we need to look at the individual trees. Using this approach will help us feel uh, like a task is less daunting and more doable. Uh, in the same article, there's a few extra tips, and they are to be in a quiet place to do your task, reward yourself, and ask people to hold you accountable. Being in a quiet place helps limit distractions and helps you stay focused without being interrupted. Rewarding yourself will help you want to finish the tasks and it'll help motivate you. And asking someone for help is totally okay. When people motivate us, it makes us feel like we can do it. So in conclusion, there are many ways we procrastinate and there are many negative side effects with it. However, as we've learned, there are many ways to combat it. Again, there are many ways to deal with procrastination, whether it's making a schedule or setting time limits on your phones. There are ways to help. All of you should take steps to help fight against procrastination, even if they're small steps. However you think fit, make steps and over time you will overcome it.
time? Five. Five.